Welcome to a very special episode of Comatose, our 25th installment. On the occasion of Christmas this year, we here thought it would be nice to revisit a classic tale for the season. So today, we bring you a brief contemporary take on Dickens' novella. We bring you a comatose carol. So sit back and enjoy. Oh, hear me now. In life I was a friend, a neighbor, a one most dear to you. I come now with a warning, old friend, that you have yet a chance of escaping my fate. You will be visited by three spirits. Heed their words, listen to them with intent to understand or suffer an eternity on the path which I tread now, your spirit roaming the earth, witnessing more atrocities than a single mind can imagine. Look to your past, old friend, for here now comes the first spirit. Do you not know the sins with which you lie? Fear not the phantoms of your dreams, for they are nothing but that. Dreams of dreams an expression of your fear through the suppressed thoughts of yesteryear. But do not fear your dreams. Reality is much worse than any nightmare, any scare, any phantom. In the dark of the night, your worst fear is nothing compared to the atrocities already committed by your fellow man, if not by you. So follow my light as it shines through your guilt and your shame, your regrets you forgot you had as it shows you what's left of the soul you once possessed. Follow me through the footsteps of time and the ticking clocks as you remember the happiness you once dared feel. The innocence of Christmas past. The wonders and the joys of a time long lost to the turmoils of your current self, too absorbed in the nickels and dimes of the question resting on the bills that never pay themselves. Look upon your former self, your former smile, your former desire, your former happiness, your former life. Living off borrowed time, the clock ticks faster. Look now at the younger self, the younger you you once had, the once happy self dancing and singing with the friends with whom you've since lost touch. Remember the days when you thought that you were invincible and the future meant less than the time that was slipping away from your very grips. But the light grows dimmer as time goes on, and it is you who makes the decision to turn it off. It is you who decides to no longer feel the joys you once felt it is you that has forgotten to be once you once were. As you turn off the light, just remember that no phantom is half as frightful as the reality one creates for themselves. Surely, old friend, the joys of the world are vast and ripe for a selfish soul to snatch. Let the company of objects not take the place of a warm and beating heart that bids you well See the world as it turns now, old friend, for here now comes the second spirit of whose coming I warned. Come, dine and drink. Come in and know me better, man. Come see and feast upon my throne of boons. Do not let the spoils of mirth for Christmas present elude you without eating and drinking your fill. Come now. This occasion has no quarter for denial or melancholy. You have never seen the like of me before. Like my 2,000 odd brothers before me, I have but a day on this earth. Touch my robe for my time is short. Look at the people shoveling away on the rooftops full of glee. Smell the meals from the bakers and grocers. Take in the sense of roasted birds, blended tea, foreign spices, figs, puddings, fresh pastries, and chestnuts cracked by fire. Hear the steeples and bells call good people to churches and chapels. Bask in the splendid goodwill of my torch, and know tis a shame to quarrel on Christmas Day. Sadly, we cannot go far without seeing scores upon scores of people selling their futures to Best Buy, Tours R Us, Coles, Macy's, and the bane of my existence, Walmart. Look at them as they quarrel. No, 
assail and fight their fellow man over the latest electric box that does nothing but make them desire yet another box of light and make them enslaves debtors to plastic. My 2014 brothers and I do not stand for this. These strongholds of profit and greed do nothing but turn all aspects of man into a commodity to be sold. The masters of these strongholds hold all of creation hostage. As a human being, the planet is your birthright. But these charlatans steal your birthright, sell it back to you at an ungodly price, steal your birthright yet again, and then admonish you for having little more than pennies to give them in return. Those tasked with protecting the people fight more against those lamenting innocent blood spilt at the hands of the state than power brokers plundering the future of planet Earth. You are right to call that humbug, but you are wrong to call that humbug Christmas. Some claim to have Christmas spirit and know my family, yet their gold lust drive them to deeds of passion, pride, ill will, hatred, envy, bigotry, and selfishness in our name. Do not be fooled by them, for they are as far from us as the east from the west. Remember that and charge their doings on themselves not us. I do not have long to roam this earth, but in this short time I sprinkle my sweet incense over all the dwelling places of man. I give the desolate places a heartier portion for they have more want. Look at the family before you. Look at them enjoy their company and not their trinkets. Even they know me and my kindred despite their struggles. The smallest among them know me best. Alas, the boy has but little more time than I. If these shadows remain unaltered by the future, the boy in a mirror of dreams will die. You did not mark the arrival of this impeding death before I was born, why wait until I am old now? You didn't want to know the suffering of others? You were only thinking of what you wanted? Humbug. My time is at hand. Quickly, I must show you the children I will bring forth. Behold, the boy is ignorance and the girl is want. Beware them both and all of their degree. But most of all, beware this boy, for on his brow I see that which is doom. Lest the writing be erased. The bloody, unclean blemishes of these children, your children, move you to ask if they have refuge or resource? Fool, why pity them? Are there no prisons? Are there no workhouses? And as the world turns, so does it turn us. It turns us into phantoms and it turns us into dust. But if you are to save your spirit from yourself, from being shackled by the chains which you forge day in and day out, hear the words of the final spirit whose coming I warned. If you continue your ways, See an end that will befall you. He wakes up in a cold hallway, dripping with sweat. The stray cracks of fluorescent light flicker across skin. The white tile floor creaks and snaps under his weight as he rises to his feet. The hallway is long, almost having its own horizon. The walk is tiresome. There are no doors, no signs. No indication or place mark of how long he's been walking. There's a soft light at the end, and that is the goal. How did I get here? Am I alone? He said out loud, voice cracking, but only the silent response. After what seems like a lifetime, the hallway ends, a solitary door. As the knob turns, 
Cold air seeps out the edges as the vacuum breaks. A small black box sits on the pedestal. The room is blinding white, flush walls, floor, and ceiling white and glowing, illuminated within itself. A sense of void enters the stomach, and the soft humming of the box reverberates off the spine. Hair stands on edge. A primal feeling of uncertainty takes the mind. What is this? As if the question was verbalized, a figure appears next to the box. A long beak of a mask, shrouded in a black veil. Startled by the sudden appearance, he asks, What is this? The figure, shrouded in shadow, removes a hand from a trobe and touches softly atop the box. The box, soft edges, matte black on all sides. I don't understand, he says. As the words leave his lips, the panels on the wall brighten and the image appears. A man, he was certain, although he did not recognize the individual on the screen, nor the language. More panels brighten, and the images of different faces, different languages unfold until the walls are flooded with color and sound. Stop, he says, and the screen's dim, all but one. In the center of the adjacent wall, a man speaks softly in a language so familiar, so comfortable. Welcome, Welcome. the image says. You are last. Confusion unfolds in more confusion, and he looks to the hooded figure. The solitary beak gazes silently, never breaking the void. The screen flickers, and he asks, Why am I last? As if his cracking voice had been acknowledged, the image spoke, You are last because you wanted to be. Last for what, he wondered, but he dare not ask. Your journey is complete. Please join us. Place your hand upon the singularity and complete your download. He looked once again at the black box, now softly humming as the white small light emits from the top. A symbol of a bird illuminates the adjacent walls. Is this death, he asks? The image, stoic and cold, flickers for a moment as if thinking. You may not be concerned with death. Your mind will be downloaded with the others. We are waiting. You are last. He thought for a minute, looking once again to the figure, and then the box. He took a step forward, aware that this decision may be his last conscious one. Standing in front of the box now, his hand shaking. Do I want this? He speaks to nobody in particular. The image flickering for a moment changes to a much older man, his beard silver, his eyes sunken and bright green. The image looked upon him. Want it? You created it. As he placed his hand upon the box, the rush of memories, thoughts, logic escaping through his fingertips, the conscience mixing in a personal algorithm with the other ones and zeros, merging with humanity. After a moment, the box stopped humming. Download complete, it read. He backed away from the box but the figure stopped him, slowly removing the beak to reveal a void behind the mask. Fear curled up his back. He wanted to scream, but nothing would come out. Turning, he saw the door disappeared. This was it. Thank you, doctor, said the image. And with that, the figure turned to him and everything went black. He awoke in a bed full of sweat, his own bed. As he looked about his room, he saw the box on the table. Do I want this? He whispered. Whatever you may understand from these spirits, I beg you, old friend, remember the lessons of the past. Live in the present and live towards the future. You have just listened to episode 25. Thank you, and we hope you enjoyed a comatose carol. For the best listening experience, you can find Comatose on the SoundCloud app for your smartphone. You can listen to our full podcast archive over at SoundCloud or at our website, comapod.com, where you'll also find links to what else our contributors have been up to on the internet. If you enjoy listening, consider throwing a few coins our way by clicking on the donate button at the top of our website, comapod.com. 
Be sure to also follow us on Twitter at Comapod1. That's C O M A P O D and the number one. We do like to feature music submitted by listeners, so you're absolutely welcome to email us at comapod1 at gmail.com. Thank you again very much for listening, old friend. We will see you next time. <laughs>